Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to um, an In Stitches family crochet party on a Tuesday evening. We've had some internet gremlins recently, so uh, we've been wanting to make sure that we are going to have a solid internet connection, or at least what we can call a solid internet connection. Uh, so we really hope that it sticks out for us this evening as we sit and chat. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, no internet scrolls so far, none that we've seen anyway, so <laughs> hopefully they'll stay at bay. <laughs> Uh, I hope you've all got something to work on. Maybe put your feet up if you just want to sort of hang out, uh, play in the chat, chat with Mr. and Stitches, and you have a nice beverage. And tonight we're going to talk about how to start a crochet or knitting group. Um, so this is actually something that has come up in discussion a couple times now. And um, people have asked sort of how to go about starting a group or a club, um, some place where you might hang out with a bunch of people and just crochet together. Uh, and I thought it was a really great topic of conversation for a chat. I mean, how fitting is that? Um, and just because a lot of people don't necessarily know how they would go about starting one or maybe who they would approach or where they would do it or how they would start or if they need to, you know, kind of run the thing or what's involved. And since um, I have managed to start several crochet clubs <laughs> and knitting circles in my time as a, a crafty person, I thought I would cobble together a bunch of the ideas and things that I found commonly came up whenever I was starting a club or my friends were sort of trying to start something. Um, and even right down to the one that my mother-in-law regularly goes to. So my, my mother-in-law goes to a Wednesday evening knitting club at her local library and she absolutely loves it. And so um, I've got some of her information here as well. So hopefully if you're planning on starting a club or you wanna join one, we'll have some information for you in today's uh, chat that you might find helpful um, for either or. So maybe you know where to look for them now, or maybe you just want to completely start one yourself and uh, and who you might want to start it with. So we're going to cover the whole spectrum of questions. And if you do have any questions about your own knitting or crochet group or things you might want to, um, to sort of talk about or deal with, um, or any kind of issues that have come up or you think might come up, um, let us know in the comments section or the live chat since we're live right now. And if we can get to it, we We'll get to it. Hopefully, though, I'll be able to cover your, your questions in our little uh, chat today because I've got quite a lot of notes here. Uh, okay, so let's start at the beginning. Why would you want to start a crochet or knitting club or join a crochet or knitting club? Primarily, this is for socializing. So socializing is a pretty important thing to us humans. We like getting together and spending time with each other. Uh, it makes us feel good. It reminds us that we're not the only one in the world with you know problems or, or little things that we're trying to get over. Um, and sometimes just spending time with other people is a nice way to relax and get out of your own head. Some of us need socializing time more than others. So some of us are really into socializing and some of us like to be on our own. But now and then we all kind of need a little bit of a, of a, a get out and hang out with people. And it's really fun to hang out with people if you've all got something in common. Um, and as you get older, you might find it difficult to, especially if you've been moving around or you know, like your job changes, um, being able to hang on to older friends or even maybe you're moving away from family members. It's difficult sometimes when you find yourself in a new place or if you're just not that uh, bombastic a personality, it can sometimes be difficult to make new friends or new acquaintances or get some get sort of established in a new town. And there's a whole lot of different ways to do that, uh, but this is kind of a fun way to do it and it's a way that you can share something you enjoy with other people and start to make some new friends in the process. So, um, Another good reason that you might want to join a crochet club or a knitting club or start one is because everybody has different levels of ability. So you could have been crocheting for 30 years like I have um, and then join a group and sit with a bunch of people who have been crocheting for half that much time or maybe even a couple years or maybe like twice as long as you have. And because everybody has come at the learning process of this craft from a different place, we all have completely different things to contribute. So it doesn't matter how long you've been crocheting, whether it's five minutes or 50 years, there's always something new to learn. That's one of my favorite things about knitting and crocheting is because I feel like I'm always stumbling across something new, a new, a new way to do a stitch or a new kind of tool or a new sort of pattern or a new idea, some kind of new fiber, um, or even just another way to do something. And it could be something so far out of the realm of your sort of 
comfort zone that it's you didn't even know it could possibly exist. So hanging out with a bunch of different people and watching different people knit or crochet or work through their patterns is sometimes a really useful learning experience because we learn really well from each other. That's something about being human. <laughs> we do learn well from each other. So you could pick up new tips, new tricks, um, just hanging out with different people, even if you're all working on the same project together. That's really fun too, because you can see how everybody brings their own personality to something. And you could see something in a different color that you never would have you know, put together in your own mind. Maybe somebody uses uh, yarn weights in a completely different way than you do. It's a really neat way in a small kind of safe environment to, to really dive deep into your favorite hobby and get different perspectives on it. Um, so obviously you could possibly learn something new. You also have the opportunity of an instant group to share patterns and supplies with. So one of my favorite things to do in a creative group is to regularly bring yarn or supplies that I'm not using or I feel that I'm not going to end up using or I'm not comfortable using to the group and say, all right, have at it, everybody. You know, if you want this or you don't, or, you know, maybe this is a color you're looking for. It's a fun way to kind of do a supply swap or a pattern swap. Um, my mother-in-law often runs into this. Uh, she had some yarn that was driving her crazy because it was full of sequins. <laughs> and she just did not enjoy working with it, but one of her friends in the knitting group loved working with the sequin yarn. She had no problems with it. So mom sort of balled it all up and gave it to her. And, uh, and a lot of that happens in her club. And I've run into that too. It's fun to share your supplies with other people. Maybe you've got some leftover yarn or some kind of yarn, like a novelty yarn that you just, you just don't know what to do with and you don't want it cluttering up your craft room anymore. Well, somebody in your knitting or crochet group might know exactly what to do with it and might absolutely love the stuff. So it's kind of a built-in recycling uh, group too, if you will. Um, and plus you can share tools. So if somebody's brand new to the whole program and they're, you know, they don't really know how to crochet or they just sort of want to give it a try, it's a really nice opportunity for them to maybe be able to try out some different tools because people in the group who've been doing it longer have some and, uh, and maybe even borrow some yarn. <laughs> Mr. and Stitches, you have ukulele today. <laughs> I brought Yuki out. We have a new member. Oh. Just wanted to welcome uh, Emma. Hi, Emma. Welcome to the family. <laughs> I, I, where were you hiding the ukulele? <laughs> it's very small. I had it in my pocket. <laughs> I never know what you're going to pull out. Um, yeah, so in addition to sharing things, tips, tricks, and stuff like that, it could be really helpful for you if you have stuff you want to unload or if you're brand new to knitting or crocheting and it might be a nice place to maybe pick up a few things um, that will, will save you some money. And that brings me to my last point about why it's nice to either start or join a crochet or knitting club. It's a cheap night out. <laughs> Especially like in the case of my mother-in-law, she goes to the local library, which doesn't cost anything. She can sit in there for an hour and a half with the girls. It's close to home and she just can hang out, get a little crocheting done, forget about the cares of her life for a little while, chat with a bunch of other women and she hasn't spent any money. So it's a nice cheap way to go about spending some time out. You don't end up having to spend that much money. You just bring your, your crochet with you or your knitting and um, you're out for the night. It's a nice, it's or the afternoon or wherever, whenever you tend to have your meetings, uh, it's cheap. It's a cheap get together. So I'm all in favor of those. <laughs> so that would be why you want to have a crochet group. Join one, start one. Um, who, this is a good question. Where do you even start? So I would answer that question by saying, first of all, who are you and where are you in your life? So are you in school? Are you in elementary school, high school, middle school, college, university? Are you in school? If so, obviously you want to talk to your friends. There's probably community boards that you could post a little notification on saying, hey, we're all meeting in the library at, you know, five o'clock on Wednesday nights, you know, you're free to join us. Just bring a crochet hook and some yarn or your knitting needles and we'll meet you there. Um, so that's, you've already kind of got a built-in audience. If you're already in school, um, you can maybe send out an email if you guys are all kind of connected via email. If you're living in a dormitory situation, um, you can post a note in your 
common room and maybe meet in the common room once or twice a week or once or twice a month. So it's it's sort of easy if you're already in school to kind of start one of those up. You can talk to your friends or even invite people from different classes or different years. And it's a nice way to make some new friends, get to know some people and sit and do some crochet or knitting. Um, maybe you're not in school, maybe you're in work. Uh, if you're in a an office setting and you've got, you know, a good number of people, then post a note on the board in the lunchroom or the kitchen or wherever you might have like a little common area if you have one. Um, also, if it's a smaller um, office, you can just sort of email the whole group and say, hey, I'm thinking about starting a, a knitting or a crochet group. Anybody want to join me? We can meet at lunch in the staff room or, you know, wherever. Um, if it's a nice day, maybe we'll sit outside and just see what comes back to you. You'll be surprised at how many people might really like the idea, but would be timid. And you might get questions like, well, do I have to know how to knit or crochet? Or I, I don't know, can I just sit with you? In which case, you know, you can take the opportunity to say, I'll teach you. <laughs> And you can talk about all the neat places you can get information or you can like sit down, fire up a laptop and watch a tutorial together. Um, so if you put it out there, you'd be surprised at how many people kind of come back with, well, I'm interested, but, um, and that's fun. That, that kind of puts you in a position where you get to be helpful. You get to be a teacher in a way. Um, or maybe you'll attract some people who are like, oh my gosh, I love to crochet, I love to knit. And I didn't know anybody else wanted to do that. This is wonderful. So try that at work if you group, if you have a, a pretty group, a, pretty decent sized group of an office. I mean, even if there's only three of you, <laughs> put it out there. See if anybody wants to join you lunch for a, a crochet or a knitting fest. Even if it's just two of you. Even if it's just two of you. <laughs> um, so that's school and work. Most of us are kind of in one or the other. There are other places though that you might frequently habituate that you may not have yet considered creating a little club within a club. So people who belong to churches or other clubs or groups, they might. <laughs> we have a super chat. That from... had a bit of flourish to it. <laughs> from Tease Crafty Creation. Hi, Tease. Hi, Jada. Working on my C to C blanket. Nice. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I love that. Corner to corner blanket. Yeah. Time I start another one. Got, got to put some more yarn aside for another blanket. Um, I think, do we have that here? I. I... The corner um, to corner blanket? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if we put that one. Because I was going to post it in the um, chat, but I don't see it here. I'm going to have to have to go get it. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to get back to my little list of, of who, who to invite. Um, so yeah, if you belong to a church or you belong to another existing club, let's say you're in a book club um, or you regularly meet with a group of people, maybe you belong to a charity, maybe you belong to a bunch of volunteering, uh, volunteer events, and you've already started to create some friends um, within those clubs. Why not start a club within a club? A lot of churches have um, auxiliary groups who like to knit or crochet or get together to make things for a charity. Um, and other groups like to do that too. So maybe you belong to a book club. Well, there's nothing saying that the people in the book club might not also be interested in starting up a crochet group. Or maybe they want to sit and knit and crochet while they discuss a book. Why not layer a couple on top of each other? Um, if you've already belonged to a group with a built-in um, bunch of friendly people, then that's a perfect place to start and ask, hey, would anybody here like to learn how to crochet or join a club or just sit with me while I sit and knit? Um, you'd be amazed, once again, how many people would love the idea but never really thought about it or were too timid to ask. <laughs> we have a super chat. We have a super chat. From Reba 54. Hi, Reba. Thank you so much, Reba. <laughs> <clears throat> I love it. Where every, were you? Every time you play, <laughs> every time you play that ukulele, I go, I'm taken away to a beach somewhere. <laughs> uh, there was no message from Reba. No you, message yeah, from Reba. Yeah, you were wondering if oh, there was a okay. message. Oh, so. Thank you, Reba. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you aren't at school and you aren't at work, or maybe nobody in your current church or, or other club group is sort of interested, then maybe you can try a couple of other things. So, if you live in a subdivision or a neighborhood and maybe you have some neighbors or you're friendly with some of the people in your neighborhood, why not pull your neighborhood and see if anybody there would like to join a knitting club or a crochet club? That is actually has a lot of benefits to it because in a neighborhood, you're already in a close geographical location. <laughs> I'm trying to politely interrupt you. <laughs> hey, ukulele can interrupt me anytime. We have a <laughs> super, super chat. <laughs> 
from T's Crafty Creations Hi, again. T's, thank you. <laughs> and uh, T's says... T's likes the ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> I am not liking the cakes I am using. Oh. Colors are not constant. Should I frog? Hmm. Well, it depends. If you're giving this away as a gift, um, then you want to be really proud of it and you want to really like the colors and the color transitions. So maybe just like put that one aside um, to finish later for like another reason. Like if you're already half into it and you're not in love with it, but you were really only planning on making it for yourself or for a throw in the spare room or maybe for one of the, um, the pets, <laughs> then there's another thing saying that you couldn't just finish it anyway just to have it done. Um, but if you really don't like it and your time is of the essence and you wanted to make this for somebody else, then you know what? I don't like to give away things I'm not proud of or things that I'm not absolutely in love with. Um, I think the things that we love the most are the things we're supposed to give away. Uh, so, yeah, I would take it out if you don't like it and use that yarn for something else. But if it's not, like I said, if it's not the end of the world and it wasn't really, a, they didn't have anybody special in mind, then... If you're really into it, I would just finish it. Make it like a small blanket. There's nothing saying that like you have to finish it if it was going to be a twin. Just just make it like a little baby blanket or a, a little like lapgan or something. Somebody will like it, uh, even if you don't, especially if you don't have somebody in mind. But uh, yeah, I know. I don't like it when that happens. You think, oh, that's going to be such a pretty like, you know, self-striking ball of yarn. And then it starts coming out and you're like, no, well, that's not really the way I had envisioned it. <laughs> oh, I've got to get to two super chats oh my goodness. here. <laughs> So the first one, which I'm going to run up the chat here, is from Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Thank you. Uh, Samantha says, entering a blanket in a fair what? in September. Oh, my gosh. And any advice? Yes, block it. <laughs> um, block it. Make sure that you've got, um, if you use different colors, you have a little sample of every single bit of the yarn that you use because sometimes they want to see that on the card that you join it with. Make sure it's blocked so that all of your edges are flat and everything lays nice and and, and smooth and, and um, none of your edges are wobbly because they look for stuff like that. Um, so pretend that it's like, you know, this is this is something that you're presenting to a very important person. Um, you want it to look as as clean and perfect as possible. Um, so if, it feel, if you feel it needs a wash, go ahead and wash it and block it that way. Uh, but make sure that you've got your uh, bits of yarn um, that you made it with. Sometimes they want to see that to prove that you actually made the blanket. So keep your scraps. Um, but yeah, block, block, because <laughs> that's, what, that's what I ran into. I entered one in a fair once that I hadn't blocked because I didn't know what blocking was. And I did not get first place. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean I didn't get first? <laughs> and I was the only one entering in the category. So <laughs> I kind of smarted a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the second uh, super chat is from Miranda. Oh, Miranda. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Miranda says, if it weren't for your videos, I would have learned to I wouldn't have learned to crochet. No. Thank you for creating your tutorials. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're so happy we could help. <laughs> that makes us happy. Um, going back to, to T's Crafty Creations, yes. um, it's for a chair throw. What do you think? A chair throw. So going back to uh, oh, okay. should I frog the... Um... So if is it if it's for someone, I'm going to say it again. If it's for someone in particular, like you're giving this as a gift... Um, then I would want to love it myself. Like I would want to be like just so in love with it. I don't want to give it away. Then I know it's, 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 it's perfect for someone. Um, but if it's, if it's just for around your house, um, you know, and it's going to get a lot of love, like it's the kind of thing that you're going to curl up under when you're reading a book or watching television, then I would just finish it. Cause why not? Plus, you could always add cute little appliques um, over top of the places where the color changed and you didn't really like the transition. And that's kind of neat. You know, it adds a little bit more personality to the blanket and uh, covers up the strange jogs if you don't like that. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> we have another Aww. super chat from T's Crafty Creations. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, no, seriously. Oh, um, thank you. By the way, I love your show. Thank you for everything. Learned so much. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very so much. So sweet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're happy to help. We really are. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so we're still talking about who. Who would you interact with in order to get a group going? And we just started talking about neighborhoods. So if you have, if you live in a little subdivision or you live in a sort of a larger neighborhood, that would be a great place to start Aww. because you want to, um, you, it's helpful to have people involved in your group that live somewhere nearby. And this is also a nice way to get to know some of your neighbors. And knowing more of your neighbors in your neighborhood makes for a stronger, happier community. So any way that you can kind of, you know, they're always talking about building community and getting to know your neighbors. This is a great way to do that. So starting something like a crochet club is a great way to meet some of your neighbors, get to know them, you know, build some nice strong bonds. Um, you feel safer about leaving your house because you know who lives nearby and that you know you're all looking out for each other. And then it's an opportunity for a bunch of you to get together fairly regularly and just, you know, sit, have a chat, learn how to crochet, you know, practice something you've been working on, maybe finish some blankets. And, um, and I'll get to another few, some more reasons why it's fun to belong to a club later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've got to get to three super oh, chats here. And golly. there's, there's another question I wanted to get to. Okay. Well, the let's... chat's kind of moving quickly though. <laughs> it's a busy evening. Okay. So Three super chats. Oh my God. So the first one's from Tina. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Tina says, hello from Liberty MO. So I'm going to Montana. Montana. So. <laughs> hello from Liberty, Montana. I recently gathered a couple of girls at work who wanted to learn. Yes. We used Jada and Stitches tutorials <laughs> to help, and they now love you guys Aww. as much as I do. Oh my gosh. Aww, thank you. It's so sweet. I love having a group at work to crochet with because you can end up doing it every day on your lunch hour or even on your breaks. And it just, it adds such a level to your work day. It's just so great to be able to share something you love with some of the people you work with because you get to see them every day. And that means you have something to talk about every day. I love it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And the second one is from Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Thank you. Stacy says, I've learned so much from you, Jada. Oh. I am joining Victorian Lattice Squares. Ooh. For an Afghan, what are some pretty joins that lie flat? Oh my. Um there is a there is there's okay, well sewing them together is simple and flat and it doesn't use up much yarn. So that's sort of my default join. But if you want something that's really fancy, um Priscilla Hewitt, uh, who is a matriarch of the crochet universe on the internet. Um, she has something called a braided join. It's not difficult. It just looks super unbelievably fancy. Um, I haven't attempted it yet myself, but I've seen it and I thought, oh, oh, I want to use that on, a, on an upcoming blanket at some point. Um, but that's really fancy. So if you've got really fancy squares and you want like a really fancy join, then you might want to look that one up. It's called, I think she calls it the braided, the braided join, but Priscilla Hewitt is her name. Um, she's marvelous. Um, but yeah, and, and then if they're really fancy squares and you don't want to take away from all of the super amazing fanciness of it, then you can just sew them together or slip stitch them. Um, whatever you feel like won't detract from the look of the squares and would be quick and easy. That's another thing. When I'm joining my squares together, I like to be able to do it fairly quickly, uh, but those would all lay flat and they would look nice. Okay, and our third chat, super chat of the group is from Elle. Elle, hi Elle, thank you. <laughs> And Elle says, I made a secret project of yours. It's the 2019 blanket in crochet thread. <gasps> no way. What? Oh my gosh, that's so neat. You're going to have gonna, like a little pocket yeah, size. Yeah, a little pocket size. Wow. You what can a, frame it. Now that is a great way to use a use I a I like that. Thread. I like that idea, Elle. Like awesome. Uh, oh. Your hair looks cute. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope Mr. and Stitches had a haircut. <laughs> Should we tell them? Uh, you want to you want to give away our secret? <laughs> sure, I think we should tell them. So, Mister and Stitches gave me this haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and cue the laughter. <laughs> uh, yes, I said just take off an inch, just an inch, and he was like, "Okay, gee, it would look so cute if it was at your cheekbone." I'm like, "Just take off an inch," and then, fruit. yeah. So, <laughs> I have this super adorable French bob for this. It'll grow. It'll, It'll grow back. <laughs> It'll grow back. I swear. And yes, I gave him a haircut too. Yes, so. <laughs> I have had my haircut. But thank you. Actually, at all, at all, fair. Full disclosure, I love this haircut. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have have Mama and Stitches freshen it up a little bit for me in a Ma little Mama while. Mama and Stitches will fix it. But uh, uh, 
yeah, I, I do. I do really like it. This short. I, I love the French, the French Bob look. I just, I just, I love that 1920s flapper look. I like I absolutely it. love it. I think so, it looks cute. And it is cute. And it's nice because the, the warm weather's coming. So it's off my neck. <laughs> we have another super chat oh my goodness. before you get back to it. Before you get back to it. Um, if it wasn't for your tutorials, this is from Manda Girl. Manda Girl. Thank you. <laughs> if it wasn't for your tutorials and teaching me how to crochet again, IDK, I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know <laughs> how I would be handling my postpartum depression. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, big heart. Anything to work through that. It does get better, though. <laughs> Aw. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. And you have a baby. Like, that's the best part. <laughs> yeah. Can make clothes for it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, thank you so much. We're so glad to hear that. That's anything, awesome. anything to bring some more happiness to the world, as long as we can we can the all more, find the more something. smiles, the better. And that's another good reason to join a crochet group. The socializing helps pull you out of yourself. Oh, which reminds me. Yes. Someone, oh, you said there was a question. Yeah, I wanted you to address this one. I have to find it's it's tricky to find them in the chat. Okay, well, um, while you're looking. I'm just going to get them finish off my little who category of who to talk to about starting a group. So we just talked about neighbors, two other things you might want to try. So your friends, chances are you've got friends. You may even still be in contact with a whole bunch of them. The ones you grew up with um, on Facebook or other social medias. And there's nothing stopping you guys from starting a group. So if you all still live close together, ask your friends. Maybe this is a group of people that you regularly go out with. Maybe you all meet together for dinner once a month, or maybe you are, you like to go to movies. Maybe you've got other little things that you, you try to regularly do to try to get together and, and have some fun. Pitch the idea to them. See if they might want to start a crochet group or a knitting group. Some of them might want to learn. It's again, a nice cheap way to get everybody together and have a good time. And you can always pick a night that works, works for everybody's <clears throat> schedules because i know the older we get the more our schedules kind of like get busier and busier and more complicated <laughs> okay i can't find the exact question no. but um i uh, i believe it was mrs rooster i think that was the name uh was asking and was saying um i i'm isolated yes and 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 don't know anybody who uh is interested in in the same craft so we're going to, we're going to get to that. Okay. So we're um, going to get to that. And this actually, this little bit right here might really help you. So if you are away from your friends and family, so asking your family to join a crochet group, asking your friends, maybe you've got a bunch of cousins. So I, I, I always leave the friends and family category to the end because sometimes it's as funny as it seems, we don't necessarily think to ask our friends and family members if they would be interested in joining or starting a crochet or knitting group. If you live far away from everyone that you know, feel comfortable with, love, chances are you're still in contact with them somehow, whether it's through social media, maybe you you know call once in a while. Um, and if you're watching this, chances are you have access to the internet. Um, so you can start a crochet group with your friends and family, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a centralized physical location. Um, so if you're not comfortable talking to people who are in your sort of centralized physical location, like school or church or your clubs or work or whatever, then ask your friends and ask your family. If they live nearby, that's extra bonuses. If they don't, you can totally do a hangout on the internet. So this would be kind of like a virtual, but still in real time, social group. So you don't even have to leave your house, big plus there. Um, and you can do it through Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts, I think Skype, but there's probably a few other places, maybe even WhatsApp. You can all be together in real time. And the Google WhatsApp is like, a, it's like Skype. So you would just sort of open up your computer. You can all jump into the same party group and you can all just sort of, you all show up as like little, little like, you know, pictures. <laughs> and you can just sit and chat with one person, maybe a couple people, maybe there's a few of you that get together and talk, and you can do it virtually through the internet without even leaving your house. And it is still socializing, and you can still share tips and tricks and ideas and maybe even patterns or you know places where you might find um, you know stuff that you wanna pick up, maybe great online shopping ideas, especially helpful if you all kind of live scattered. So if you do live isolated or you live far away from all the people that you would prefer or be comfortable kind of being in a club with, then consider doing it online. 
same thing. You would reach out to them the way you would normally call them, text them, message them through social media um, and just say, hey, would you like to hang out via Skype or maybe Google Hangouts Saturday night and just like crochet? Mm -hmm. And uh, absolutely. <laughs> Yes. This is especially great if you've got family and friends who live in other countries. Um, they're, you know, most of the time these things like the Hangouts and um, Skype, they don't cost anything either. Just sort of your regular internet. So that is just, it is such a wonderful way that we can still stay connected to people that we really care mm -hmm. about. And it gives you something to sit and do. You can just sort of sit, let's just sit for half an hour or an hour or whatever and we'll crochet and knit. And it's lovely. And you can do it with a whole bunch of people. So you don't have to be in immediate living space with other people. And sometimes you don't even have to leave your house. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we have a couple of super chats to get to. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Make sure I didn't miss one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everybody. Okay. Um, we got the one from Man uh, Amanda, Amanda girl, right? Yeah, Amanda girl. Okay. So we have one here from Irabella. Irabella. Thank you. I believe Larabella or Irabella. Laura or I, or you can't read it. You yeah, can't yeah it's, it's either an I or an L, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. 79. I'm going to say Bella 79. Bella 79. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we have Bella. one from Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, Sarah says, I just found out someone I work with is expecting. Any recommendations on baby projects for someone pretty new into crochet? I love your channel. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, so first things first, have a chat with, and if you're, and if you want to surprise them, you might have to do this sort of sneakily, but find out the sorts of things that um, the mama to be um, or the papa to be is interested in having, like maybe they've got um, issues around acrylic or cotton or wool. Maybe there's a certain fiber they kind of prefer. Uh, maybe they're into organic stuff. So you might want to try and find organic yarn. Maybe they don't care. Um, Maybe there's a certain color they're doing the nursery. So there's a whole bunch of information you can kind of pull from these people to kind of help put together in your head the kind of project you would like. Baby blankets are super fun and simple. And we've got several tutorials available um, on our channel that are all really easy. Even if they look complicated, they're not. And we take you through them. So um, feel free to give them a try. The... Um, the fan stitch baby blanket is one of my absolute favorites. It looks super fancy and it's not difficult to do. So that becomes like a family heirloom. You might want to try that one. Um, we have a super little baby cardigan. That's a really simple project. So it's made in pieces and you sew it together, meaning you don't have to worry about strange angles or decreasing or increasing. It's super simple. We have a really simple pair of baby booties, uh, little sock booties. We also have a little pair of wrap booties. Again, super easy, uh, easy for beginners. These are all really easy projects. Uh, we've got some hats. Um, and toys. So if you might want to make something like a little baby rattle, we have a, an egg baby rattle. Um, we have actually an everything for babies playlist yes. that you can find. Crochet for baby. Crochet I for remember baby. the name. <laughs> uh, yeah, crochet for baby. And we've, we've done a lot. So we've got toys and wearables and blankets and... Um, um, and we often talk about things you might want to consider, like the fiber. Uh, some people are don't like acrylic for babies. Some people only want acrylic because it's easy to wash. Um, I had acrylic blankets growing up, acrylic um, blankets and sweaters and stuff. And uh, I had some cotton ones too. I liked them all. So, <laughs> so check that out and that'll hopefully give you some ideas. Got to get to some super chats here. <laughs> There's a few of them. So um, the next one here is from Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Thank you. Yolanda, this one made me chuckle. <laughs> Mr. and Stitches, are you French? You look <laughs> French. <clears throat> Mrs. Mrs. Stitches, because of you, my boyfriend swears he wrote to a TV show hoarders about my yarn addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour avec you, avec me, avec moi. See? That was, that I was, am part French. <laughs> Actually, our, our French could be a lot better. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It should be. <laughs> considering we're Canadian. Uh, um, am I French? No, no. I am not French. <laughs> no. But thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was from your lab. That's so funny. That made my, 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 my cheeks hurt. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the next friend is from Al. Al! We got another super chat from Al. Thank you, Al. Al says, an 80-ish lady invited me to her crochet group 
instructor yesterday yesterday at Walmart. She also wants me to be in her choir only in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Hey, you want to join our crochet group while you're at it? Our choir too. Hey, while you're checking out with these this milk and eggs and that ball of yarn, you want to join our... Uh... Oh, is that it? Are you checking out with a ball of yarn? Maybe. See, that's a whole angle I never even thought of. If you are in a public well, setting... Well, what would clue her into and, that? Well, like, I, if you work on cash milk, eggs, and in a like place that celery? sells yarn and like the yarn's coming through, I'd be like, do you want to join? Do you want to join? Do you want to join? That's do you awesome. want to join? Do you want to join? <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what about going what about going into your local um uh your any lo any store that sells yarn mm -hmm. even if it's walmart yeah. or michael's or i was gonna actually get to that because okay i'll, like, let, I'll let you get to there that. Are let, me, places... let me make sure i think there was another super chat let me get to that one and then you can continue it's in here somewhere. Or while you're looking, I'll continue. Um, yeah, if um, if you're looking if you're looking to join a group, so not necessarily start one, but join one. Um, if you've got a local yarn store or a local craft store, great place to start. Ask them if they do a knitting club or a regular sort of event where people just kind of jump drop in and do some knitting or crocheting, because it might be a good place to start. You might meet some people there that you want to kind of break <laughs> off and create your own little group with, especially if you all live sort of like more to closer together. Diane wants us to let everyone know that the coffee mug is, is now available, <laughs> but actually it's not on Etsy, Diane. It's on, um, it's, the, it's, it's on Teespr the, the on Teespring. Teespring. So there's a, there's a link, to, there should be a link to it under our, uh, all of our videos should have a link to the. Yeah. Then you might even see some of the stuff sort of sitting there. Yeah. But, the but Teespring yeah, we, shop. We, we, but thank you for <laughs> reminding, uh, reminding us. Yeah. There's a coffee mug now. Okay. So I found the super chats. <laughs> Uh, so the first one here is from Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Thank you. And uh, Tanya says, I want to say thank you. Your tutorials make it easy for my eight-year-old to follow along with me and learn. Eee, that's awesome. Oh, that's so great. Oh, my gosh. We love it when we know there's kids starting. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> I started really young. So that's one of the reasons we we, we kind of hope to, to bring younger people into it because I loved it. I loved it when I started and, and I haven't put down the yarn since. So <laughs> Right now we are making the cute chick pouch for her Girl Scout, uh, her Girl Scout troop for Easter. Aww. Love it. Oh, that's another place you might check it out. Uh -huh. if you want something like a Girl Scout group or Girl Guys, any kind of scouting uh, group. 4-H. Uh, if you're in some kind of athletics club, everybody likes to do lots of different things. So especially if you're young and you're involved in different sort of clubs or, or, or you know, if you've got friends there, ask them, hey, you know, do you want to get together a little bit early before we, you know, do whatever, practice whatever and do some crochet? <laughs> that's what I'd like to do. <laughs> we have a super chat. <laughs> Mr. and Sisters is singing. This is from Tease Crafty Creations again. Tease. <laughs> <laughs> Tease Crafty Creations Thank says, <laughs> Jada, what's your favorite yarn? Oh, golly. Um, of all the yarn I've tried so far, it depends on what I'm using it for, because I, I absolutely love a lot of yarns. But if we're going to talk, say, acrylic, um, just your standard medium size four acrylic for a regular old, you know, medium sort of size four project. I like Burnett Premium. Um, I think it's only available at Walmart's, so at least it is here in Canada. Um, it's like really, really soft. Um, and the yarns that we have available here, I know it's different for everybody, but I really like that yarn. I find it really, really soft and it's, it's, it's fun to work with. It's nice and smooth and it flows really well. I would like to add something um, in regards to the people that feel isolated. Mm. Um, aside from our sh our live stream here and our um, our videos that we we put out, you know, once or twice a week, sometimes three times. Uh, there's a there's a Jada and Stitches fan group oh, yeah. on Facebook uh, that's run by Crystal. Yeah, Crystal got that going. And if if you join that group, you'll be able to find lots of people, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of people that love crochet and knitting. Yeah. <clears throat> and you should be able to easily uh, set up, um, you know, Skype conversations, um, WhatsApp, 
uh, Google Duo, Google Hangouts, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or you can even just send pictures back and forth if you kind of are, you know, timid about getting to know new people. Yeah. Uh, again, always be careful who you're giving your information to, especially if this is these are people that you're kind of getting to know through the internet. I mean, let's be smart. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's a nice place to start. If you, especially if you're timid about joining a group or maybe you're homebound or you're isolated, like Mr. and Stitches says, it's a good place to start. You never know, you might find people in that group that are also in your geographical area. The reason I mention this because I'm reading uh, some people's comments that say they're like an hour and a half away, uh, an hour and a half drive from from oh, civilization. Yeah. We are so, nowhere near anywhere where we could do that. That's why I say if <clears throat> if um, you have internet connection, you might want to consider reaching out to the people that you know, um, friends, family, whatever, and trying the virtual concept where you yeah. kind of get together once a week or a couple times a month and do a Google Hangout. All of you kind of join at the same time and uh, and just sit there and crochet together and hang out. It's 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 almost as good as physically being in the same place. And yeah. it, it's fantastic if you all live like far, far away from each other. It's a very good option. Mm -hmm. I, it definitely. So uh, <laughs> we have another super chat. <laughs> and this one is from Yolanda. Yolanda, thank you. <laughs> and Yolanda says... <laughs> Could you make a video on some more fancy, complicated rug designs? Yeah. I've seen <laughs> Russians make it, but I don't speak it yeah. and can't understand. I love you guys. I, I love rugs. We want to do more rugs. Yes. Um, we've got so many plans for so many things. <laughs> we have a re very long list of projects. <laughs> there are so many things that I can't wait to get to. And but um, absolutely. Keep, absolutely. I'm, gonna, I'm writing it uh, down now she, here. Now, now Yolanda says fancy complicated. Yeah. So, so I, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the ones that look like like, like got, really awesome mandalas or they have tons of color in them or they got they've got like really nifty stitchery that kind of runs through them i know the ones you're talking about um they're a total conversation piece i absolutely love them so it's the sort of thing where somebody walks in the room and goes oh wow you know <laughs> i don't want to step on that that's too pretty uh yeah i love those those are and you know what they're not as complicated as they look especially if you're <laughs> changing colors changing colors in a project can make things look really complicated so this is getting seconded and third and, and quadruded <laughs> Uh, um, Carol says, yes, more rugs and baskets. Yes, and baskets. I love that. <laughs> rugs and baskets. Sweetheart, do you think you could turn on some extra lights? I just feel like it's it's getting a little dark in here. And uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we've talked about uh, the why and the who. Let's talk about when. So this is just a quick little uh, thing to... It's, it's obviously part of creating a group or joining a group. You have to be able to settle on a place and a time that works for everybody. Um, so if you're doing it virtually, that's really easy. There's no place to worry about. It's just a time. Um, so what time is good for everyone? <clears throat> if you've got people coming in from different time zones, then you want to talk amongst yourselves and figure out a good time. But if it's a group of you that's at work, lunch is a great time to do it. Um, maybe you can schedule the odd outing at lunch to go to the yarn store or a craft store, or maybe even if you're good enough friends, you could schedule a bit of time after work or on a weekend to get together and do something that's yarny related. Um, that's often really fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are in school meeting during lunch or just after school or um, anytime, maybe just before school on recess, something like that, you've kind of got built in times that you can meet. And you can also decide if you want to do it once a week, twice a week, a couple times a month, whatever. Um, if you're doing it in a neighborhood or a local community, then it's great to pick a time, um, maybe sometime during the week when not everybody's really busy. Um, talk amongst the group that wants to join and get together. And it won't be too long before you find a time that works generally for everybody. Um, and then it's a good idea to kind of keep it regular. So for example, my mother-in-law heads every Wednesday night, I think it's around like between seven and nine at the local library. That's it. And you, it's a drop in, drop out thing. So it's not like anybody's looking for you. If you don't show up, no one's taking a roll call. It's just, you know, if you if you want to get together and knit, this is the place, this is the time. And you kind of know in the back of your head, that's always when you're going to get together and do the knitting. Um, if it's taking place at a local yarn store, they'll probably post a note, a note on the window or maybe like on their little bulletin board that'll say, hey, we have a drop in <laughs> knitting club or a crochet club, you know, every Wednesday night or every every Thursday evening or every Saturday morning, you know, whatever they feel is best for the group of people that might be interested in that. Um, so the when is something you can get together, like once you've got the intro.
Chris. So once you've put it out there to everybody that, hey, I want to start a crochet or a knitting group, who's interested? Once you have sort of the interest coming back at you, then you can start saying, all right, well, what's a good time for everybody? Uh, generally, a a get together is best if it's at least an hour long, but two hours is best. Don't make it strict. Like if people need to, to leave because they've got to pick up the kids or they've got to go check on their elderly parents or maybe they've got other things they just have to do. Maybe they have shift work. Um, it should be nice and flexible. But a two hour window is often the best because um, that gives people time to get there, get comfortable, you know, pull out their project, do a little chatting, work for a little while. An hour goes by really quickly. So an hour and a half to two hours is, is probably the best. Um, and then try to keep it try to keep it regular because then people can always kind of count on it. Like it's the first Thursday of every month, you know, or it's the second, it's the, it's every second Saturday or something like that. So make sure you talk to everybody and figure out a schedule that works for everyone in the group and where, so this is my favorite part. Where do you actually have a crochet club? Let me have another sip of my tea here. Excuse me. This again, depends on who is involved. So easy, if you're at school, it can be the local library. Um, it can be somewhere outside in the nice weather. Uh, maybe you've got um, an empty classroom. Ask a, a teacher or a professor if you can use that classroom for an hour or two. Um, there's lots of communal places in a school setting where you might be able to meet and it's fine. You don't need special permissions or you, know, or you do need a little <laughs> bit of permission, but the room's there. Um, in work at a workspace, you might have a, a, um, like a communal lunch room or a staff room, or maybe you've got like a nice little place to sit outside. Maybe you all want to sort of, maybe you, you're, you're working in a place that's like right in a town and there's lots of little places in the town that you could go like on your lunch break, you could go to the local park and if, in the nice weather. Um, so if you're already kind of already meeting because you're at school or work together, then it's easy to find a place. But if you're not all at school or work together, and you've got like, you know, a community or a neighborhood or something that you're trying to kind of, you know, figure out a place. Think about the people involved. So if you can use a local communal place, a public place like a library, a community center, an arena, uh, maybe a church, some churches and schools um, have, you know, open, you know, auxiliary parts of their building to, um the local community after hours, you just sort of have to contact somebody who's in charge and ask them if your group could use a bit of your space. Um, maybe there's like a, a park if the weather's really nice where you are. Um, there's lots of nice community spaces where you can meet. If you are just getting together with a handful of your neighbors, you might just consider doing it at one of your homes or rotating the schedule. So you know, every fourth Wednesday, it's at my place in the backyard or, you know, every second Tuesday, it's at Shirley's place in her kitchen or something. So think about the people that are going to be part of the group. Think about a, a meeting area that would be helpful for everyone. If you all live in the same condo unit, for example, your condo building often has like mutual group um, areas that you can sort of like like lounges and stuff where you can kind of hang out or maybe like boardrooms that you can rent or sort of like uh uh, sign out for the evening, you might want to do that. You know, like every second Wednesday, we meet in the communal room downstairs. Same thing if you live in a dormitory or something, um, or maybe an old age community. Uh, an old age communities often have like really neat communal areas where you can meet. Um, so look into the places that are open to you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a, a public <laughs> place. If you have a little bit of money to throw around, then there's nothing saying that you couldn't like you know, we meet weekly at a coffee shop, talk to the owner and say, hey, there's a bunch of us who want to come in and sit and crochet for an hour. We'll all buy coffees and desserts and stuff. But can we do that? They're usually very open to that, especially if it's a big sort of area, because it, you know, it helps generate some some activity for them. Same thing with a favorite local restaurant or um, even like a like a hotel or a motel. If you've got one of those in town that have community rooms or or um, rooms that they don't mind sort of renting out for short periods of time for not a lot of money. You might want to consider doing that too, especially if there's a lot of you. Um, we have a uh, follower here named Eric. Hi, Eric. And uh, Eric says, I'm a preteen 
and I started commenting when I was allowed to have a channel. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I thought that was cute. We oh, should share it. That's so neat. Well, I'm so glad you're hanging out with us, Eric. Yeah, Thank hello, you. Eric. This is uh, crochet definitely appeals to people of all ages. I, I think that's another one of the reasons that I, I love it and I love this community because you've just got everybody from all over the place, all ages, because we're creative people. That's what kind of keeps us all glued together is this, this mutual love of creativity and yarn. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a place to keep, uh, to have the group meet, then consider the local public spaces. Consider your own home, if it's people that you know, like your neighbors, your friends, your family, something like that. Uh, consider the communal places at work or school, public outdoor places if the weather's nice. Um, some place that's easy and accessible for everybody. So if you do have members in the group that have accessibility issues, like maybe they're not good with stairs or maybe they're in a wheelchair, um, consider that too. Make sure it's a place that everybody can comfortably get to and that there is seating. You probably want to be sitting around crocheting and knitting for an hour or two, not standing around or sitting on really uncomfortable concrete seating. So you might want to pick a place that's comfortable. Um, the lighting is decent, is relatively quiet, so you can all kind of hear each other chat. Adding. Um, and you've got some space to lay things out. So you might want to have like a table nearby where you can put your yarn and your accoutrement down or you put your bag down next to you. You need a little bit of space. Uh, so have all those things in mind when you're trying to pick a nice place to, um, to have your, your club meet. Uh, but there's lots of options out there. And um, I think I got them all. Yeah, homes, arenas, communities, parks. <laughs> Did you? I'm like not. I'm part. not sure if you mentioned this. You probably did. Did you mention um, uh, printing out a little flyer? Yeah, actually, I'm just about to get to that. That's how how to actually start. Oh, I th okay. I yeah. wasn't sure. <laughs> You're not paying attention. <laughs> I am paying attention. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to read everybody's comments. I understand. Okay, so we've talked about the why. Why would you join a crochet group? Or why would you start one? We've talked about who would you invite, when would you have it, where would you have it. Now the how. So if you are not naturally given to being outgoing and like a real starter of things, then this might be the biggest sticking point for you. How do I start? How do I approach people? How do I even, like, where do I even First begin? thing you do is go to uh, Home Depot and purchase a bullhorn. <laughs> can you get a bullhorn at Home Depot? I don't think so, sweetie. No? No. Where can you get a bullhorn? One of those? Yeah. Who can yeah, you get a bullhorn? I don't Attention, everybody. <laughs> I'm starting a crochet club, 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 club. <laughs> You're in a tiny little room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody's holding People their ears. People are covering their ears. <laughs> okay, I'll join. I'll join. Just I'll join. Stop. Turn it off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, again, this depends on who you are planning to invite to join the group, or or you know how out there you want to put it. So. Again, if you're at school or work, you might want to email everyone. You might want to post a note in the common room, like the lunchroom or like on the, the community notice board. Um, you might want to just, if you're in a school, you probably have already a group of friends. You might want to start by passing it out to your friends. Hey, I want to start a, a knitting group or a crochet group. You guys want to join? And then if they have friends that want to join, you know, they can sort of spread that way. Um, I'm thinking we're going to meet like on at lunches in the home ec room or we're going to meet lunches in the, you know, the library or in this corner of the, the cafeteria or something, uh, wherever you go, you would feel comfortable sitting and crocheting, then that's where you'd tell people to meet. And then people will just sort of start to join. That's kind of a neat thing when you, especially in a school setting, when there's a lot of people, same thing at work, you maybe just email everybody at work that you think might be into that, or just email everybody and say, Hey, I'm going to start crocheting at lunch in the lunchroom. If you want to join come join. <laughs> um, it's a little more tricky when it gets to be like neighborhoods or, you know, if you're thinking about inviting complete strangers to join a crochet club or a knitting club. Um, public, public place, like a coffee shop. Yeah. So first of all, if you're planning on meeting at the library, go to the library, speak to the head librarian and say, hi, I'd like to start a group of crochet, you know, knitting here. Can we do that? Is there a time or a place or a space that would be available to me to do that? Start with that. And then they say, yeah, sure. Say, great. Can I post a note up on your notice board inviting people to join? In which case you're going to leave some information. So either you, you have, uh, you create an email that's just for that club. So that it's not really necessarily connected to anything private or personal because you don't necessarily know who's going to read that board. 
Or if you feel comfortable, you know, leave a phone number, leave, leave your info, you know, speak to the desk. And so have them kind of leave their name and number with the librarian, for example, if they want to have them get in touch with you. There's a few ways you can do it. Um, if it's your neighborhood and you've got like a communal mailbox, post a note on the communal mailbox, you know, people will see it. And if they want to, you know, join or they want to ask more questions, they can call or email you. They can even stop by if you're comfortable leaving your address. If you're all living in the same um, the same subdivision, and you all kind of live there, then it's it's okay to do that. Maybe, you know, ahead, go on, come on, go ahead, knock on the door, say hi. If you're not comfortable with that, you know, leave a name or an email address, and they can contact you that way. Um, so it's, it's a level of comfort that you want to put out there. If it's friends and family, and you want to connect through Facebook or something, that's kind of easy, because you can sort of select who you want to, to message. Um, you can call, maybe you can text the group of friends that you have on your phone. Sort of just putting it out there is, is, takes a little bit of thinking and it doesn't have to be complicated. You can literally just say, hi, I want to start a crochet group or a club. You guys want to join? Anybody interested? Anybody interested? And it can be that simple, that casual. You don't want to make it sound intimidating like, I'm starting a club and only the best need apply. You know what I mean? Because people are going to be like, well, I don't know how to crochet You can only well. bring alpaca yarn. <laughs> And gold, yeah. gold no, crochet No books. snobbery here. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, if that's your thing, go for it. <laughs> uh, we have to get to a super chat here. It's from Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Thank and you. And Lynn says, are there directions on how to use super chat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you figured it out. Lynn, <laughs> you figured it out. You, you, you sent a super chat. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it kind of just walks you through the process. If you click on the button, it kind of tells you what to do. Yeah, next, so, so if you are seriously asking about it, um, it's just, that little that little dollar sign next to the little smiley face. That kind of walks you through it. Yeah, that's and and it's it's pretty I'd say it's pretty it's pretty it's more or less straightforward. Yeah. And before you before you get to the next stuff, uh, we have another super chat. <laughs> this one's from L. Oh L. <laughs> And Elle says, <clears throat> everyone is invited to Smart Charity in my birthday on the 29th. It's my big 50. Oh, my gosh. Told you I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got a little a little emoji of a dinosaur. That's here. awesome. Well, happy early birthday. Yeah. Elle. And that's smart charity. That's 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 happening near you, I assume, or is that something you're running online? Leave leave some more information in the chat for Mr. Stitches, or or leave a comment down below after this becomes after a the video, video too. Yeah. yeah, it's just so if anybody's interested and is in your area, they can check it out. That's for awesome. sure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So getting back to to how to start the conversation with people, it can be something as simple as an email or a message or a text message that you send to friends or coworkers or family members. It can be something like a notice that you post in a public place like the library, the local arena, maybe even a local coffee shop or or a yarn store um, or on the mailboxes in your neighborhood if that's who you want to talk to. Make sure that if you're leaving personal contact information out there, especially if it's if it's through the internet, you're just careful about what information you put out there because you just never know <laughs> who's out there, who's looking to to kind of grab information. Yeah, be, so be cautious. Be cautious. Be, but be cautious. You'll know in given the circumstances that you're in. So if it's just friends and family you're talking to, chances are they already have your contact information. If it's neighbors, you know, a little more, you know, maybe just like leave your email address or something or your, your phone number if you're comfortable with that. Um, and if it's a it's a very public thing, maybe have like the head librarian or whoever runs the community center, have them be the go the liaison. And if you know, you can say literally on the post, if you're interested, please leave your name and number or name and email address with, you know, at the library desk and, and you can come collect I, I, it. Like when I, week. Whenever we pop into a library or, or something, there's always that little cork board near the front, you know, the adorable little, like, small, small town. You know, missing puppy. Yeah, uh, um, uh, lost cat. You know, guitar lessons. The guitar lessons. Uh, <laughs> and I feel as though, all, not every time, but almost every time, there's a little flyer that says, you know, join our knitting group um, with a little, you know, those rip off the tag email or, or, phone, or phone number. number yeah. So I think that's a that's a decent way to do it. It's like a in, a, in your way, local but it works. in your local area. Yeah, it works. So so that's a great way to start. Yeah. And like I said, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can even say things if you're putting together like an actual notification that you're gonna post, <clears throat> you can say things like, 
um, you know, date and location to be announced, or we're thinking Wednesday nights at the local library. Um, learn how to crochet. If you've never knit or crocheted before, it doesn't matter. Come join us and we'll teach you. Um, you know, have you been knitting or crocheting for 50 years? We'd love to have you because we'd love your, your input. Um, this is just a casual, fun place for everyone to hang out and talk about crochet and play with yarn. And it, try to make it sound as welcoming as you want it to, because if you want to get a group of people together to enjoy something, you kind of want that to be relayed through your message. So keep it simple. <laughs> Just like Mr. Messages. We have a new member join. <laughs> Welcome to Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining the family. <laughs> <clears throat> So that's how you would put your contact information out there, where you would put your contact information out there, who you would direct it to. Um, there's a couple of little extras I wanted to talk about too. So if any of you belong to any kind of group or organization or club, you've probably already noticed before that there are other really wonderful spin-off things that can happen when you get a group of like-minded people together. Uh, some of the things that you can do once you've got your group, you've joined your group or you've started a group, once you've got them up and off the ground and you're all running, it does turn into more than just a knitting or crochet club. It really turns into a social club. You, you become a, a group of friends if you're really lucky. And, and you might want to do things like read books together or go on shopping trips together or help each other out with with things that aren't necessarily you know crochet related i know people who have started crochet groups and who have invited people who are learning english for example or a different language um and they sit and they they converse in a different language so they can help each other learn another another language while they're knitting and crocheting there are so many neat things you can do in addition to just sitting with people and crocheting and knitting, you can get everybody together and just make stuff for a charity. You can pick a charity that means something to the group or maybe somebody in the group um, has just had something really heinous happen or they've had a child in, in like the local sick kids hospital or something and you want to help them. Then you can make a bunch of things with your group to auction off or create a charity sort of like for the charity and make that person feel that much better. There's, it's just when you have a group of people together, it's almost endless what you can do. And it's it just goes so far beyond crochet or knitting. Um, it's, it's wonderful. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be in person. If you're going to do it virtually, you can still all decide on, hey, we're going to make this particular thing and we're going to make 10 of them each and we're going to donate them to the local hospital. And, and it's all going to be in the name of our, of our crochet club. You know, it's, 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 it not only does it feel good to get together and crochet with people, it get, it feels great to get together and crochet <laughs> with people and donate to charity. <laughs> we have another super chat. Super chat. Super chat. This is from Maribel. Hi, Maribel. Thank you. <laughs> Maribel says, I've been crocheting for many, many years. Thanks for reminding me how much fun it can be. <laughs> Just made your soap sack with scrub off yarn. Oh, no Yay. Way. Oh, wow. With the scrub off yarn. Yeah, yeah that's the a, scrub off. That's a great little project for that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and you can put the yarn, get the soap in there. Thank you, Maribel. That's awesome. <laughs> um, another thing you might want to consider in your group. So once you've got your group up together and running and you're having fun and you're crocheting and stuff, um, you can organize other little events. So you can do potlucks. Maybe, maybe you meet every Wednesday. Well, maybe every fourth Wednesday you do like a little potluck, like everybody brings, you know, a little something and you can have like a little nibble while you're sitting there and crocheting. Uh, maybe you're going somewhere where it's okay to have a coffee pot going. And so somebody brings like a little coffee maker and you can sit there and have coffee or tea. Mm, coffee, tea, and snacks? Coffee, tea, Hello. and snacks. I mean, come on. You cannot crochet without... You're going you're gonna to have all the spouses there too. <laughs> That's also something you might want to consider. Having everybody get together. Sometimes maybe maybe you've all got kids. Maybe you've all got a spouse. Um, you can sometimes do things Partners. outside of it. Like, hey, I'm having a barbecue. I want everybody in the club to come bring your families and we'll have a barbecue. barbecue. Maybe it's something like a yarn crawl. So you pick a, a whole yarn bunch crawl? of... What is that? A yarn crawl. These are my favorite. Um, <laughs> you you grab your girls or your guys or your group together and you you just say, okay, guy, on, on Saturday afternoon, we're going to do a yarn crawl. And you pick all the places within a certain geographical location that sells yarn and you go to each location. And if you're really 
<laughs> if you really want to um, to to sort of add a fun element to it, you can make it like a, an orienteering or a, a scavenger hunt. So um, at every single location, we have to find uh, the cheapest ball of yarn, and then the most gaudy ball of yarn, and then the brightest ball of yarn, and then the fluffiest ball of yarn. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to buy it. You just have to, have to locate it. The first person to find um, and then you all kind of vote, like, oh, no, I think that's the brightest one, or I think that's the brightest Elle one. Elle says they have tons of yarn crawls um, there in Nashville. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yarn crawls are so much fun. Again, find out if you've got, if there's local Local groups, yarn crawls. Go to the local places that sell yarn. Ask them if they if there are groups that meet, if they know of groups, if anybody's posting in the area. Uh, get on Facebook, see if there's anything in the area that, that maybe, like, there's they've kind of made it public and you can join. Yarn crawls are fun. Um, and then you can also do other things too, like maybe the people who work in those those different stores know your group is coming if you're a big enough group, and they might have little things set up for you, like uh, a coupon for your group for that day, or you know some kind of little deal or some kind of fun little like project kit just set aside just for you guys. Um, maybe you're going to do a fun project by you know every single place you go to, you buy a ball of yarn and you have to make something out of it, and then they, they all kind of get grouped together and auctioned off for charity or something. Yarn crawls are a riot, but they're just an excuse to get out and hang out for an afternoon with some of your like-minded friends and just see a new place, maybe check out a new store. People that you don't necessarily shop with will shop in different ways. Maybe they'll introduce you to a kind of yarn or a brand that you'd never really thought of before. They'll be able to say, oh, I love this yarn. I use it all the time. Um, there's a lot of fun ways and reasons <laughs> that you might want to give a yarn crawl a try. Uh, I have a friend who's obsessively into quilting and she does uh, quilt getaways, retreats. She does quilt crawls. She does sort of the same thing, but in the quilting role. Um, so that's something else you might want to consider too down the road. If you if you join an established group, they may already have these things up and going like, oh, hey, once a year we go to this, you know, retreat and it's just three straight solid intense days of like crocheting and knitting or something. Um, I know a couple people who do that. Not a lot, uh, but a couple people who do. And that's that's fun if you can A, afford it and B, if, if you can if you can fit it into your schedule. Uh, those are kind of extreme, but they are all things that will spin out of belonging to a group. Um, it's. It's fun. The number one reason that you should join a crochet club um, or a group is for the fun of it. You know, you might learn something, you might be able to relax, but most importantly, you should be having fun. Um, and if the club that you maybe joined in another town, or maybe you you joined before, you're, you can't get to it anymore, or maybe it's getting a little too big, or it's it's going in a direction you don't like, that's why you can start your own club. There's nothing saying that you, you can't do that, because Clubs do get bigger and, you know, there end up being groups within the club that all want to do different things. Like maybe there's a bunch of you that just rather do blankets and you really want to focus on blankets. You can kind of break off and do your own little thing. Maybe there's some of you that are much more interested in, in going out and doing things physically. And there's other people who would rather just stay put, relax, you know, work on a project. Um, this is why little clubs sort of spin off from each other. So there's nothing stopping you from starting your own club. Joining one, if you know of one or you think you might want to sort of see what they're like before you start your own, it's uh, it's kind of like doing a little bit of research too. But um, they're fun. They're they're a great way to socialize, learn a little something, and have some fun while you're doing it. So if um, you've ever wondered about joining a club or starting a club, then I hope we covered some information here that was helpful for you this evening. And does anybody have any questions about joining a club or starting a club? Um, or anything that you've ever run into, like if you've done this in the past, if you've ever run into problems, um, feel free to share that <laughs> in the chat. And also after this becomes a video, please leave your experiences in the comment section. Um, and I hope that everybody has, has a chance to read through them because there is some super wonderful, useful advice in the comment section of these, uh, these live streams because people have always got such great tips, tricks, uh, life experiences that they want to share. And I find that they're, they're, they can certainly be helpful for people who are new to the whole world of crochet and knitting, or even if you've been in it a while, but you've never joined a club, you never know what you might learn. <laughs> All right. So we'll give it a minute or so and see if anyone has any um, questions related to starting a crochet group oh, I just or knitting something. group. Yeah, while we're while you're kind of looking through that, I just wanted to mention there's one other neat thing that you might want to do. Once you've got a club up and running, you've belonged to one or you start one. Um, if you're in a 
a town, let's say you're running your little club in a town, there's usually a local uh, group. Often, this is sort of something you would probably find through the local chamber of commerce. Like if you go to the local town hall, they might be able to kind of direct you. But most towns have something that kind of like a welcoming committee or a welcome wagon. And it's usually an opportunity for different businesses in the town to kind of put their, you know, their business card or a little like kit of something literally into a basket. And when somebody new moves into town, frequently they are given a welcome wagon or a welcome <laughs> basket from the local town or that organization <laughs> that kind of helps welcome them to the town and give them an idea of, you know, what services are there, you know, what companies, um, what they might be able to find in their town that they wouldn't necessarily know was there. There's nothing stopping you from getting involved with that local welcoming committee. So if you have a, a, an up and running club, crochet club or a knitting club, um, drop into your local town hall, see if they know who the local welcoming committee is. And if you've got like a little a little notice or a little pamphlet that you can give them and say, well, please include these in your welcoming kits uh, because, you know, we're a knitting club and or a crochet club. And if people want to join, we're always looking for new members. Um, so that's a neat way to expand the club that you might already have and meet some new people. That's another fun thing about these social events is that you kind of get to meet new people, make some new friends, which is increasingly difficult to do as we get busier and busier and busier in our lives. <laughs> I hear you giggling over there. Uh, Makita said her husband allowed her to crochet in bed again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that <laughs> um, there was a question from Toby, but I seem to have lost it in the chat. Um, busy, busy. I know I got through all my notes, so if you can find it, great. Otherwise, I guess we will. Okay, so Toby's question was, oh, uh, would this it. information be good for starting any kind of club? I want to start a book writing club. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say it applies to any club. Yeah, um, starting a club is... It's about is, gathering people with the same interest. Yeah, that's exactly that's it. That's all it is. If you want to, and like we said, sometimes you can layer interests on top of each other. So if you yeah. wanted to start a book writing club or a book reading club, and you also knew these people like, you know, knitting and crocheting. There's no reason why you couldn't sit there and crochet and discuss, you know, the book you're reading or the book you want to write. Um, it's exactly the same format. So you just sort of put it out there. You put it out there to anywhere where you think you might grab some some like minds who might be interested in joining the group. Um, and if it helps put together um, like a bullet format of kind of what you want to cover, like, uh, you know, in the case of knitting and crocheting, I knit and I crochet, I'm willing to teach. Uh, you know, if you, so if you've never, don't know how and you want to learn, this is a great group for you. If you already know, but you just want to kind of sit and hang out with people who also will knit and crochet, this is good for you too. You know, like you can kind of just lay out in bullet form the vision you have for the group um, because you might want something different out of your group. So maybe you want to attract a certain kind of people like, you know, this is, I'm really interested in, in, um, you know, I, like if you're a teenager, I want to get other teenagers together to sit and knit and crochet, you know, because I want to sit with other teens or other kids, for example. Um, maybe if you're in a retirement home, you're probably going to be looking at getting other retirees together to hang out and knit and crochet. Um, you might want to to be upfront with the kind of things you expect from the club if you have any expectations at all. If you, if you don't, just say, "Hey, want to get together and read a book or write a book or knit or crochet or something?" I'm your person. Let's let's like let's chat and and come up with a date and a time. Uh, so yeah, that definitely applies right across the board. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're we're well past an hour. Are we? Here. Oh my gosh. So if you have anything else to add, you want to wrap it up? I have nothing else to add. I went through all my notes. So. Um, yeah, I think the only kind of closing thing I want to say uh, in, in regards to joining a group or starting a group is, A, it's it's a nice way to socialize. It can be a very cheap outing, which is great for most of us because <laughs> who has extra money to throw around? Um, it's it's a nice way to meet people. It's a nice way to, to sort of just cast aside all the other worries of the week for a little while and just sort of sit with like-minded people and do a little crochet. If you're getting it going from scratch, um, be wary. So wherever it is that you're you're putting the word out, whether it's school or work or your your neighborhood or maybe your town or on Facebook or something, be wary about the kind of information you're putting out there. So think first, 
who might see this and does it matter? So if it's me, if it's my first name and my, you know, email address, you know, I'm fine with people seeing that. Or if I'm a little more private and I want to make sure that only the people interested in, in you know, contacting me, contact me, they're not going to take my information and do something, you know, silly with me or, or crank call me or something. Um, you can post a note with, say, the library and say, please leave your name and email address with the librarian. And then you can have sort of some setup with the librarian or or wherever you're posting your note. Um, just be always be cautious about the personal information you're putting out there. But past that, don't be afraid to ask your friends, your coworkers, your schoolmates, your neighbors, anybody in your sort of general circle that you think might be interested in doing something. Don't be afraid to ask because it doesn't have to be super formal. It doesn't have to be hyper organized. It just has to be. Uh, it just has to be a bunch of people getting together and enjoying something that they have in common. And it's it's just it's good for the heart. It really is. <laughs> Oh, are you are you playing us out? Is that? <laughs> I was about to play us out, but we got a super chat, oh my gosh. so I'm playing a super chat. <laughs> this is from Hillcross One. Hillcross One. Hi, thank you. <laughs> my first time on your live chat. Finally. Oh my gosh. I love y'all and appreciate your channel. Oh, thank you. We're so How... glad you could make it. <laughs> <laughs> How can we send mail to you? How's mom? Hugs and prayers. <laughs> Angel in Florida. Ah, well, Mama, Mama and Sitch is probably watching. Actually, I think she's fine. She's probably um, watching. Yep. If you want to share like photographs of of things that you've made with us, um, we're on. You can you can send you can send sort of like uh, images and stuff to. We've we've got an Etsy account that you can send pictures to. Um, we're on Twitter, Instagram. We were on Google Plus, but I think they've removed Google Plus. Um, and am I forgetting one? Twitter, Instagram. Oh, and Pinterest. Um, so and Etsy we're, and Pinterest. We're and we're at Jada and Stitches in all places. So you can you can send us pictures and stuff there if you want. Um, we are typically we spend most of our time between um, Etsy and YouTube. So yeah. we do get to the other ones, but not as frequently. Just make sure you tag us. Um, so yeah, if you've got something you want to share with us or you want to sort of reach out and say hello, um, then you can you can use those four avenues absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Elle says, play us out, Frenchie. Please. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm luau now. I'm thinking about the beach. My, I, I, didn't cu I didn't cut my nails tonight, so I can't really play much. Oh. You can Every, do a little strumming. I can just barely <laughs> press the, the strings. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for sitting down on a Tuesday evening with us. We hope it was a helpful chat or at least a nice little way to sit and socialize <laughs> with some of the other members of the community. Um, and um, we will see you guys Friday for another video. I can't believe it's Tuesday already, actually. I don't know. And March is almost done. I feel like I was just saying that about February. This, this month is, or this whole year is already flying away, I feel. But um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you Friday. Take care. Stay safe. Look after each other. Be creative. <laughs> Just keep a little, keep a little crochet hook with you always. You, you never know when inspiration might strike. And uh, we'll see you guys really soon. Thanks so much for dropping by. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Bye, everybody.